I had something really important happen to me when I got this driver. That club made the biggest difference. I drove the ball effortlessly. This driver is a dream. In this episode of AGTV, we feature the People's Golf Course, discuss how age is just a number, wrap up a great summer of tournaments, and have some fun in the dark. What sets us apart from any other golf course in Abu Dhabi is the convenience of our location, the right in the middle of the city, and our price. We, like, we also like to think we're, we're the friendly golf club of Abu Dhabi as well. The people's club. One of our key slogans at Abu Dhabi City Golf Club is more than a golf club, it's a lifestyle. Lifestyle meaning as we do serve the community of Abu Dhabi, uh, we have three tennis courts, a beautiful swimming pool overlooking the golf course, and as well as a beautiful terrace that serves all your food and beverage requirements. Our academy is based on advancing people through golf and introducing people to golf. I learn golf here, so we're, we're very happy to, for someone that never has picked up a golf club before in their life, all the way through becoming an established golfer. This is our goal. Night golf. Uh, floodlights go on, obviously at sunset. Um, we have glow-in-the-dark flags to make it very much easier to see your target location. The lights go on in the morning as well, so you can either tee off first thing in the morning from 5.30, all the way up until 11 o'clock at night. Overall golfing experience, friendly, fun, fair, and affordable. Hey guys, it's September. I'm Sarah Lawrence and this is AGTV. When it comes to golf, age really is just a number. Our scorecard of the young and the restless gives an insight into how the future of the game is being shaped. Golf has seen its share of young players make history, but was anything as special this year as 14-year-old Guan Tian Lang making his debut at the Masters? He mixed it up with the big boys and carved his own storyline into the historic tournament, becoming the youngest to ever compete and make the cut in a PGA event. And who can forget the outpouring of support he received due to a seemingly unfair slow play penalty. 16-year-old New Zealand female amateur golfer Lydia Ko knows a thing or two about minding her elders. She has reminded them twice now after her repeat win this year at the CN Canadian Women's Open. Ko has been the number one ranked female amateur in the world for the past three years and recently assumed the number seven spot on the Women's World Golf Rankings. She has also had the distinction of being the youngest person to win a professional golf tour event and the youngest woman to win an LPGA tour event. The only question now is, when will she turn pro? Golf in Abu Dhabi ambassador Matteo Manassero set the golfing world ablaze back in 2010 when he became the youngest golfer to win a European tour event, aged 17. In 2012, he became the first team to win three times on the European tour and most recently, Matteo won at the BMW PGA Championship this year, becoming that tournament's youngest winner and catapulting him into the top 30 of the official world golf rankings. Can somebody say hot? Ricky Fowler, who was the number one ranked amateur golfer for 36 weeks in 2007 and 2008, is arguably the most colourful character in professional golf today. His loud outfits and charismatic style only complement his smooth as silk game. Fowler was the youngest American to play on a Ryder Cup team in 2010, age 21, and the same year he edged out Rory McIlroy to win Rookie of the Year honours. In continuation of their friendly rivalry, Ricky beat Rory by six shots to secure his first professional win at the Korea Open in 2011. And then finally, his first PGA win came a knocking in 2012 when he won the Wells Fargo Championship in which McElroy came runner-up. Though a cat named Tiger is still number one, the future of golf is looking bright. As the old adage goes, if you play golf long enough, you will go crazy. But sometimes, it doesn't even take that long. Johnny McDermott was the first US-born golfer to win the US Open, first in 1911 and then again in 1912. Early on, he would challenge pros to high-stakes games at $1,000 apiece. 
and after he won three straight, the challenges stopped coming. McDermott was the first marketable golfer, lending his name and boastful persona to golf clubs and balls. On top of this, he was in high demand for exhibition matches across the US and Europe. A tragic accident at sea in 1914 on his way back from a tournament left the 23-year-old deeply affected. Suffering from mental illness, he spent the rest of his life in and out of institutions and homebound, only playing in the odd event with no notable success. They say that if not for this tragic accident, he was poised to be the greatest of them all. McDermott remains the first player to break par for 72 holes in a high standard event at 19 years young. He was the youngest ever champion of the US Open. The likes of McDermott, Francis Wiemey and Walter Hagen ushered in a new era of American-born golf talent. Well, we hope you boys have a nice time here in Boston. But personally, I don't think you will. I don't care if you whooped every single one of us the last six weeks. I'm sick and tired of people saying all you have to do to win is show up. This time you're not taking our damn cup back. The Abu Dhabi City Golf Club is home to the newest golf house retail store. We catch up with Jason to tell us about the pride of Callaway, Phil Mickelson. Thanks, Sarah. Phil had a really great time in the UK this past summer, winning both the Scottish Open and the Open Championship in spectacular fashion. We're going to have a look in Lefty's bag and see just how he did it. Let's start from the tee. The XR 3 Deep is one of the golf clubs that Phil says has revolutionized his game. Let's take a look. The XR 3 Deep has a deeper face and carries less loft than the standard x -Hot, making it a great driving club. Phil has struggled with accuracy in the past from the tee, and this club has changed all of that, making it a good option for those looking for more accuracy off the tee. Working our way towards the green, the irons are next in line. The X-Forged irons are a beautiful looking iron. They offer workability, feel, and forgiveness through a forged head, sleek design, cavity back, and a lower center of gravity, offering the better player everything they need from a set of irons. Moving closer towards the green, let's have a look at the Mac Daddy 2 wedges that Phil has in his bag. Designed by Roger Cleveland, they offer him versatility for the variety of shots he likes to play. They come in three different sole grinds. They come in the U grind, the C grind, and the standard grind. Depending on your technique, Phil uses the U grind. And where would Phil be without his Odyssey Versa putter, which helped him to birdie four of the last six holes to win the Open. Phil has gone for the number nine shape, which is a toe-weighted putter with a classical design. This seems to be working well for him. Finally, it's worth mentioning his ball. The Hex Chrome Plus has extremely high ball speeds for maximum distance, while offering a soft feel and increased spin around the greens. Being a class act, Phil shared the victory with the staff at Callaway. He told the packed house, I know there's a lot of you, but I want everybody to hold the jug. Who wore it best? Now let's see who wore it best. Was it Billy Horschel with his octopus pants at the US Open? Michelle Wee with her American flag leggings at the Solheim Cup? Or Jonas Blixt and Ricky Fowler wearing more orange than the legal limit at the Barclays? Let us know what you think on our Facebook page and we'll have a winner in part two. Stay tuned for the news wrap up, a bit of night golf and this month's fabulous competition. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You might win something. You always have to push yourself. It's just uh, trusting that what you have is enough.